You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. I am Daniel. I'm Clint. Three windows means John Tweet Sports is back with us. John, are you still doing fantastic? I am doing fantastic once again today, guys. Love hearing that. It's a fantastic day when you're a national champion. Mm, Yes, that is absolutely true. I know. Just let that wash over you again. Just that's great. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you guys, you know, it's been 394 days since Alabama last won a national championship. Boy, that seems like how many? I mean, it's only been like, like a long days time since we've won it. Since we've won a national, not even 30, not even, maybe like 30, 30 days. days, 31 days, maybe. Boy, Somewhere I still remember there. it well. I still remember it well. I remember there's it. there's kids that there's kids that haven't even ever seen Alabama win a national championship since they've been born in their lifetime. In their just, lifetime. In their lifetime. They're, I they're walking drink. around. They're walking I bought around. I a drink for somebody that's never seen Tennessee win a national mm. championship. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> well, you love to see it. All right. Well, we're back today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, watching on YouTube. Uh, check out the pod on YouTube. And thanks for subscribing to wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to the audio. Subscribe to the YouTube. Leave us a comment. Leave us a rating and review. Whatever it is, we appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Um, uh, we got quite the little community, John was just we do. commenting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you love to see it. Uh, if, you're a, if you're a fan of Cheers. a rival team and you got nothing better to do than watch our podcast, then – Kudos to you. Uh, and if you're a fan of Georgia, obviously, we love having you. Um, today, we are back talking about uh, 2022 signees. And um, the road has brought us to a young man by the name of Marvin Jones mm. Jr. Um, mm. He is... You got, the, um, you got the man part right. Yeah. He is, he is a problem. He is 6'5". He is 245. He's listed as an edge defender. He's going to be on that defensive front. He's probably going to have his hand in the ground quite Ooh. quite a bit. He might be Ooh. roaming around a little bit. Whatever Glenn Schumann wants, that's what this man – whatever Trey Scott says, that's what this man's going to be up to. Um, Marvin Jones Jr., one of the highest-rated prospects in all of the country from last year's class. But he's not a prospect any longer, fellas. No. He's a college football player now. Okay, yes, sir. And so mm-hmm. let's not talk about uh, his potential. Let's talk about what we project for him. His projections. So uh, mm. I'll start with you, John. Just like I did yesterday. When you think about Marvin Jones Jr., what excites you the most? What trait or traits do you look at and just go, "Wow, that's special." Man, so <laughs> what excites me the most about Marvin Jones Jr. Uh, so obviously he is physically gifted with 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 speed and just ability to make offensive linemen miss off the edge. If you watch his highlights when high school, he's standing up most of the time coming off the edge. Um, that makes me excited just for his you know his kind of raw talent and ability to actually mm-hmm. uh, uh, use his quickness, <clears throat> use his length, um, and get around people. What really excites me, though, and this is this is this is going to be off the path a little bit. Okay, okay. Marvin Jones Jr.'s dad was the fourth overall pick in the 1993 NFL draft. He played ten years for the New York Jets. He was mm-hmm. on uh, one of the uh, an eleven and one 1992 Florida State team that played really really good defense. The stock that this kid comes from, when you're around that kind of uh, Mm -hmm. that kind of ability, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. you just know that there's a reason why he's rated as high as he is. um, And there's a reason why he's as gifted and as talented as he is, because he's been around it his whole life. His instincts are just Mm. uh, very uh, and natural instincts for oh. a defensive player at this level of college football. And, you know, you can't 
Um, you can teach technique. You can't teach instincts. Um, and I think he has it from just the stock that he comes from. And that's honestly uh, uh, what makes me most excited about Marm Jones. Ooh, Daniel, what about you? What makes you most excited about this young man? I, and I, I tear to say young. How about just man? What, what excites you about this? man? Yeah, listen, um, what makes me excited is, um, I mean, it's Marvin Jones specific, but really it's not this. It's the stockpile of talent that Kirby <laughs> and co are bringing in at this edge position. Marvin Jones is not going to be the only guy that we're going to be talking about in this class. Um, but I love what he brings. He He's, you know, he's put on some weight um, from a lot of that high school tape that John says that, that John was talking about earlier. Um, you know, some reports have got him as much as 35, 40 pounds heavier. Uh, and so, bulking up and getting ready for the sec but it, it's that speed I, I don't know if it's adam anderson speed like in terms of if we're, we're not to player comps yet but i don't know if that's the kind of speed but i do know that in terms of frame it ain't no adam anderson frame either and i mean that as a positive to marvin jones jr because he has real size and he has real speed. He can beat you in a multitude of ways. And I'm excited to watch this kid get coached up and grow at the mm -hmm. position. Um, I mean, I think the sky's the limit. I don't know what we're going to see next year. We're going to talk about that next segment. But I think the sky's the limit for this kid. Absolutely. Um, do you, you guys, you guys like music? You enjoy good music I that happens. Okay. Love it. Love love music. <clears throat> what Marvin Gaye did to America with his musical ability to to bring so much healing and love and and unity. This Marvin will do similarly for this Georgia defense, and I cannot Cheers. wait for Cheers. that to happen. He is the Marvin Gaye. Mm -hmm. Of ability on this defense, guys. I, that's a comp I, right there, guys. That's a that's comp. that's a player comp. That's a player comp that I'm the, uh, even I'm scared to put in the title of this video. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. A different kind of player, but well, a player different. nonetheless. Yeah. It's, you ooh, tell me. You, you tell go. me. You tell me the 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 absolute crescendo that they hit on the top of their game. Uh, hey, we're gonna come back after this and talk a little bit more specifics of what we anticipate next year, and then we're going to come back with actual player comps. But first, I want to let you know about betonline.net. Betonline.net is your sports book experts. They have everything you need. Uh, they even got some casino games for you real, real degenerates who just cannot, by the way, 1-800 mm. numbers, find them. They are useful mm. things. Bet online would agree with us as well. Set a limit, know a limit, uh, keep to your limit. Um, but within your limit, bet on college football futures they're gonna be coming out heisman futures we got the mm -hmm. weldon brothers again who might hey weldon brothers check check your message check whatever communication device you want um wow sprinkle a little on that heisman uh for stetson bennett it won't happen but sprinkle on it. it'll it be fun all year uh futures <laughs> golf basketball nba uh, NHL for all of you, UFC fights when they come around, betonline.net, your sports book experts. They're fa fast, reliable, safe. Uh, they are trusted. They are the official sponsor of Locked On Bulldogs and Locked On Podcast Network. Betonline.net, your sports book experts. All right. So um, we talked about what, what excites us about this young man. If you haven't gone and watched the tape, you go watch the tape. Um, Freaky athlete, top twenty player in all of uh, uh, all of high school football coming out, but that's that's all in the past. What's in the present is the twenty twenty two University of Georgia football team. Mm -hmm. And um, my question to you all is: Will Marvin Jones Jr. be making an impact on this team this year? We talked about Branson Robinson last year. We talked about the running back room and the pecking order now. The running back room pecking order is a little bit easier to hash out than the edge defender pecking order because here are the things that we know. No Adam Anderson, 
if you're if you're one of those people who's trying to stop, it no, is. Adam Anderson. Um, we know that that Robert Beal is back. We know oh. that. Um, we know that on the other side, Nolan Smith is mm -hmm. back. There's not a ton of returning production at Edge, John, mm -hmm. but there is a ton of returning players. At it. That doesn't mean that Marvin Jones comes in and just slots himself right there at number three just because there's only two guys that you really saw play a significant role last year. So where do you see him slotting in be behind some of these guys that were playing a lot of special teams last year and that were kind of waiting their turn? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's – I am really high on guys like um, MJ Sherman for one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, who we didn't get to see we didn't get to see a lot in, of um in <clears throat> in uh in 2021 uh, but i am really high on mj sherman i'm really high on uh, obviously nolan smith i think robert robert beal um brings a an experience and a seniority what i also know is what we talked about on uh what we talked about yesterday about the running back room and the rotations is that on defense you play a lot of players and Georgia rotates in a lot of guys. And, um, mm -hmm. and I think if there was ever a guy that can get into the rotation early, it is someone like Marvin Jones jr. I think Ooh. what he's going to have to figure out is <clears throat> he's not going against, you know, those, uh, <laughs> He's not going against those tackles at, you know, uh, Miami Christian Academy or whoever he was like running up against. There's, there's, yeah. By the way, there's no Christian course. Academy in Miami. There's Absolutely no not. Absolutely not. Uh, but whoever he was running against, right? Like, like these are <laughs> SEC uh, tackles, guards, running backs uh, mm -hmm. that are picking up this. And so I think he's going to have to improve his technique. Obviously, he's very physically gifted, just pure raw talent. But um, but I do see him playing snaps. I don't see him playing snaps in, you know, week one. I don't see him, you know, uh, getting out there and, and, and I don't see him being a starter. Uh, but I do see him, you know, you get around midseason and I see him starting to get uh, more of the load um, in, in, you know, some of those uh, – key down situations early down situations um just to yeah. just for fresh fresh legs because that room that edge room is not as deep um we saw it's it last not. year i mean adam anderson went out and you had robert beal who's who's a good player i'm not you know yeah. no, no knock at robert beal but but robert beal was not the level that that <laughs> the level that that particular position um moved to was very yeah. different when we when Georgia lost Adam Anderson, yeah, and I sure. think that opens up the, that opens up the door for Marvin Jones to get to get some snaps. Um, yeah. Now look, I'm going to list you some of these returning guys, and I'm going to ask you yeah. what not for their specialty, but kind of what they're known mm. for. I'll give you a little feel on it so far. Nolan Smith is a well-rounded player. Okay, mm. he can set mm. the edge against the run and get after the quarterback. He is not a only a one move kind of guy. Okay, mm -hmm. no. Um, let, let's go with MJ Sherman. We don't know exactly. He's got tons of skill, tons of upside. Uh, I think he is more in the mold of a Nolan. I think he's well-rounded, can mm -hmm. set the edge against the run. Those okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Robert Beal, again, he can get after the passer, but he's not a specialist like that. Uh, Chaz, we saw him out in space covering running backs. He's more a kind of a, if off the ball linebacker, right on the outside, he can set against the run. He's very strong, very stout, but all of a sudden, if, if we're looking at a situation against maybe a, a Tennessee in the third quarter yeah. and it's third mm -hmm. down and eight, those guys are on the field because and we're they, up and we're up by about 24. Sure. That sounds about right. It's that Tennessee in the right. third quarter. I was just, you know, who knows? that sounds yeah. about right. Um, I think, I think Marvin gets a chance to get into the game very early on mm -hmm. in those situations, because the thing that he does so well, and yes, he's bulked up and, but go the natural ability this kid has he has a natural fluidity getting to the quarterback, much like Adam Anderson did. And the, the problem that Adam found himself early on uh, in his career is that he wasn't getting the snap counts 
because he was kind of a, again, I don't think he, he came like this at the end of his career. He's a one trick pony on pass rush. Um, but, but Marvin, when you one trick pony as a freshman, like be a one trick pony on pass rush and just do all the moves you can and get after. I think we're going to see him in those very specific situations where his skill set and the thing that comes natural because in the sec playing defensive end outside edge, it, that's a, that's a grind, man. That is an absolute grind until he learns that put him in positions to succeed. And that's going to be third and eight, uh, in the third quarter. And I think we're going to see him in those situations a lot. And, and I expect him to succeed a great deal. Yeah. And I would say not as a pushback, but just as a reminder that while you say the edge room is not that crowded and that, and that is true linebacker at Georgia under Kirby smart is a fluid thing. Mm -hmm. Like there's a reason you don't see guys on the depth chart listed as I L B or O L B. You just see L B next to their name because Sometimes they need you inside. Sometimes they need you outside. And I think you look at guys like Smile Mondon and Xavier Sori. Some of those guys came in as guys that you expected to be on the outside. And then all of a sudden last year you started hearing all these rumblings about, well, maybe these guys might be better fits inside and maybe they're moving inside. All I'm saying is some of those inside guys, if if it gets a little crowded in there, you might see somebody move back to the outside. Uh, the thing that Kirby has been consistent with throughout his time is um, in that defensive room, especially he's going to get the best players on the field. And if you got to move your, if you got to change your position to get you on the field, he's going to change your position to yeah. get you on the field. And if he's got to rotate to get you on the field, he's going to rotate to get you on the field. That's yeah. what he's going to well, do. De- well, well, defense, if you're, you know, if you, if you can spread out a little bit and, you know, and come from a standing up position or even a, as a linebacker putting your hand in the dirt but you're out out wide like that's a very again it goes back to um it goes back to instincts on defense right it's it's very different than uh when you're playing uh offense and everyone has assignments and there's checks and there's you know audibles and there's different protections and whatever on defense you have some very complex stunts that the Georgia defense will run, but that front seven, so much of it is, uh, is playing off of your, your keys and your reads and just play into instincts. And if you, if you can, to your point, Daniel, I, I totally agree. It's a great point. Uh, if you have the instincts and you, you're athletic and you can, and you're physical, uh, and you can make the reads, Kirby's going to get you on the field on defense, and it doesn't really necessarily matter uh, your definition of of linebacker because uh, <clears throat> he he will you know he will take guys who have felt like they were an inside linebacker, and then all of a sudden you see them out wide, sometimes even you know up on the line of scrimmage, standing up like rushing the passer. So that's right, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we're coming back, and we're going to jump into. Everyone's favorite time on the Ooh. podcast. Ooh. Listen, if you were here yesterday, you know this is where things get a little caliente on the podcast. All right. Um, it's player comp time. We're coming back with that um, right after this. But first, want to tell you about uh, Built Bar. Built Bar is the tastiest protein bar on planet Earth. Uh, is this what I'm doing, Clint? Is this not? Is this not? What I, got, I got an idea. I got an idea. How about we just come back okay. after this? We'll just come. We'll just. We won't tell you about Bill Bar yet. Hold it. Just wait. All right. So, um, player comp time. We should have a pre-production meeting, Clint. There's. If only there was a guy <laughs> whose job it was to produce this podcast. If only okay. that guy would just get off his lazy rear end and it's do something bad. with his life. It's, it's bad. terrible. John agrees. John knows. I totally, a hundred percent agree. All right, John. Uh, Marvin Jones Jr., better at football than I am at podcasting. But how good is he at football? That's the question I'm asking you. Yesterday you gave us maybe my favorite player comp in the history of mankind. Today I'm asking you for another one. Who, by the end of his career at Georgia, who are we going to be looking at this Marvin Jones Jr. guy and saying, you know what, he kind of reminds me of this guy. 
you know, I, 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 my initial lean in is another Jones, uh, a guy named oh. Jarvis Jones. A guy that's, named Jarvis that Jones. Was, that's is mine. that yours? That was mine. Okay. Yes, well, he's I, leaning. He I, said I, he's I, leaning. So, okay. so I'm leaning. So I'll, I'll take a hard left then, and I will go with, okay. uh, with out of the box. Um, there was a guy who, um, uh, you know, has been wreaking havoc in the NFL for the last four or five years. Uh, a yeah. guy from uh, Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, his, his, name oh, is T. Oh. his name is T.J. Watt of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And T.J. Watt, Defensive Player of the Year, a guy who is an absolute monster for the Pittsburgh Steelers. By the time Marvin Jones is done with his career, uh, I could see him, you know, having a four, you know, four or five time pro bowler, Buckus award winner, an mm. absolute, uh, mm. an absolute monster. TJ Watt is going to be my, my comp, uh, for, for Marvin Jones Jr. Well, we're just going to go nice. ahead and, uh, let's just shut down the pot. I think, I think, I think this is where we, Georgia just- has recruited the best class in the history of, of college football is what I'm saying. By the time I, they're done. By the time I, they're done. I hear. I hear that. That <laughs> sounds um, right. Again, John, at, I thought at, I was coming in. At John Tweet Sports. That's <laughs> it. Yes. That's where you yes. can get at him directly. Just leave it in the comments here, but you can just go directly to add we'll John. It. I think I think at this point the disclaimer should run across the bottom. You know, like uh, Locked on Bulldogs does not – uh, condone, nor do we approve of any any comments by locked on by John Tweet Sports. <laughs> by John Tweet Sports, <laughs> but we do. Uh, nor do we do in this. We nor do we condone no. any hallucinogenic drugs that John Tweet Sports has obviously taken, and so none of that, <laughs> none of that is um, condoned. Again, I podcast. thought I was coming in. I thought I was coming in caliente, and then you you one upped me. Um, I was going to start with two players that I thought of first, and where I finally finished, Adam Anderson comes to mind, but Adam is not the size that Marvin is, uh, yeah. but he's got that, again, that natural instinct. I remember watching tape of Adam coming out of high school, and I I, I remember the day that I saw his first one-on-one at a camp, and I stopped everything, and I called Daniel, and I said, Daniel, have you seen this kid on film? And I just raved about him. So he's got those instincts. Mm-hmm. Then I want to go to Micah Parsons. Uh, talk about a guy that's mm. that's getting awards at the next level. Talk about mm. a guy that's got all the natural ability. Mm. I wanted to stop that. And then I said, screw it. I don't care for any of those because do you remember when when Jadavion Clowney broke a man's face oh, on a tackle? <laughs> it's one of the greatest what, plays. That in was a guy. That, that was uh, that was uh, Michigan. Yep, Michigan. Um, I, the capital I, one bowl. I yeah. seriously doubt. That we have any Michigan fans still listening to the podcast? We did have a Michigan fan comment the other day. Okay, okay. Comment the other day. Mich- Very Michigan respectful fans. gentleman. He was he all was. Michigan, Michigan fans. Fan, they're absolutely respectful. In the comments, would love to hear your thoughts on Jim Harbaugh giving the pump fake and causing you <laughs> to lose your offensive coordinator to Miami. Oh no! Oh no! Um, Jadavion Clowney okay. is my comp. Jadavion He's Clowney. Gonna- Jadavion Clowney, 6'5", 255. Looks like Predator, mm-hmm. okay? Look at yeah. Marvin. 6'4 and a half, mm-hmm. now two, looks like Predator, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just think that the the size, the speed, uh, the ability, the mm-hmm. instinct, the I take over. I, on my one-on-ones, I win. Lesser inferior mm-hmm. competition gets demolished. Like competition gets manhandled. I'm going Jadavion Clowney. I think... Marvin, by the time he's done at UGA, will be a top five pick in the NFL draft, whatever year he comes out. I agree with that. Uh, um, well, the cat was out of the bag. You, you all know I was going to go Jarvis Jones, single season sack leader, in UGA history, one of my favorite Georgia Bulldogs to ever watch play. Just take over. He was a takeover machine on that defense. fumble that he caused yep. against mm. Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, on uh, yep. Jordan, whatever his name was, man, yep, incredible. Um, but but I but I'm changing it. I'm calling okay. an audible because right here because I looked, you know, I looked a little deeper, and I okay. said the thing about it is is that Jarvis Jones, incredible 
college career, incredible, just drive and determination. Mm. But he did not have, listen, he didn't have the freak mm. that I think Marvin Jones Jr. has. I, I, mm-hmm. I think that's fair. J- Jarvis Jones was, he just wanted it more than you. And so he worked harder than you and he beat you. But he wasn't just the walk into the room freak Mm-mm. that I think this guy Marvin Jones Jr. is. But you know who was? Oh. If you don't, what's today, Clint? Thursday? It's give Thursday. It three, give it three days and then click your little TV on Mm-mm. and watch. Is there, there'll be a football game on, I think. Here we go. Here we go. There's one. And when you're watching that football game on TV and the Rams are, are on defense, oh, you man. will oh. see. You will see a man by the name of Leonard Floyd, and he Mm-mm. will be doing some things. He said, and "Freak y'all." This is the guy, Leonard Floyd. What is he? Oh, he happens to be six five, two forty five. Yep. That is exactly. Those are the exact measurables of Marvin Jones Jr. I'm talking about Leonard Floyd today. Eight years, nine years, ten years into his NFL career, who he's six five, two forty five. Uh, Marvin Jones Jr. is there right now. Yep. Those number, are number mm-hmm. nine draft pick of the 2016 NFL draft, Leonard Floyd. Yeah, and now pretty pretty good football player. Uh, we're replicating that yet again with this guy, Marvin Jones Jr. He's just Floyd. better than the edge defender. He's better than Adam Anderson. He's better than uh, I. You, you know, he's a different guy than Nolan Smith, but he's just he's better than Aziz Ojolari. He's better than some of these guys that have been coming through and trying to rush the passer for Georgia. I think he's got that freak in him you ne- that you just can't coach. You can't, can't you can't do anything with it. Can I just say real quickly, because you just kind of breezed over that, you just named some dudes. Mm-hmm. Like you named you said better than Aziz Ojalori Ojalori, who started as a rookie in the NFL mm-hmm. at one mm-hmm. of the toughest positions to start at as a rookie in the NFL, um, who, who, uh, who is wreaked havoc, uh, in his, in his first season as a rookie, um, in the NFL for the New York giants. Um, yeah, man, that's a dude. That's a yeah. dude. Soon like to be it. Super Bowl like champion it. Leonard Floyd. That is my comp. If you uh, all like don't it. understand the Rams are going to win the Super Bowl, I can't help you, bro. It's- Listen, bro, that listen, uh, I will say this, that the Cincinnati defense played very well in the second half against the Chiefs. Sure. They did. That offensive line ain't ready for Von Miller and Aaron Donald and Leonard Floyd and these dudes that are about to that are about I'm to sorry. eat Joe Burrow. Name an oh. offensive line that is, dude. I well, just hope for the sake of the NFL, Joe Burrow well, comes out of this game. Healthy. It ain't. Yeah, it ain't. I watched what happened to Joe Burrow in some of those playoff games and. They weren't lining up against Aaron Donald and Von Miller and Leonard. All right. We will be back tomorrow. We got more to talk about. We've got more recruits to, uh, to jump into. Uh, So join us then. Lockdown Bulldogs on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. We'll see you. See you.